Jennifer Sue, Anniversary Reminiscence. Anniversary Reminiscence, Jennifer Sue. Stacia, thank you for inviting us all here to your anniversary dinner. It was wonderful to celebrate this special occasion with you. And Stacia, I don't know if you know or not, but a couple days ago, Paul arranged for me to talk to everybody after dinner and share some of my reminiscences of the two of you. But I'm going to start with something that happened pre-Paul. Everybody, I met Stacia when I was eight and she was seven years old, so we've known each other about 41 years. And I remember my dad saying about her, that girl is so tough and she has so much grit, it's going to be hard for her to find a husband who can keep up with her. And one of the reasons he said this was something that happened to Stacia. I bet you know what I'm talking about, Stacia. You're about 15 or 16 years old. So we knew each other from horseback riding. And Stacia was a very competitive rider. And year after year, she had competed in the California State Horsemen's Association horsemanship competition. And that particular year, and she'd won the regional comp competition a couple years in a row, she'd won the regional competition again, and again she was going on to the state competition. And this was a very difficult competition. There was a written test, and there was a horsemanship test. You had to show knowledge of grooming and stable management, as well as riding tests. Not just one discipline. We were into hunter-jumper riding, but she also had to do barrel racing and gymkhana and pole racing. She had to do some Western disciplines. So it was this whole comprehensive competition. And she worked her butt off. That girl just had so much character. We really did, Stacia. And about five days before the competition, Stacia was out feeding her horses, and she had this young colt who was pretty frisky and playful. And not to be mean, but just playing, he kicked out, and he kicked Stacia smack in the face. Shattered your cheek, Stacia, broke your jawbone. And Stacia was in plastic surgery, reconstruction surgery, for 12 hours. And the doctor advised her not to go to the competition and her parents said it was up to her. Well, her arch nemesis, I don't know if you remember Vanessa Murray, Stacia, she was the reserve champion and she would have gone in your place and Stacia just couldn't let her win. So she went and she had stitches and her face was swollen and black and blue and she won the championship and she got a college scholarship as well. So college is where Paul and Stacia met. I'm going to tell you about that in a minute, but I remember Stacia, she was a year behind me, but we both went to UC Davis. She was wanting to find a boyfriend, find a husband. And so in our first few months of college, she, she dated quite a few boys, but she was a tough girl. And Stacia didn't let anybody disrespect her. So no boyfriend lasted very long. She had high standards and very strong character was made of tough metal like my father had observed. It would probably be hard for her to find somebody who could match her character. So she was in the dorms at UC Davis because she was a freshman, but she was in Segunda dorms, as I recall. But I was in my first apartment, and I had a little party sometime in the fall, and Stacia told everybody in her dorms, and this one guy, Lars, came to the party, and he brought his friend, you, Paul, you were going to UC Berkeley, but you were visiting Lars over the weekend. And so I noticed Paul and Stacia off in the corner all night long talking. And after the party, Stacia came to me and said, I think I found a guy that I'm going to marry. And I thought of what my father said about it's going to be hard to find somebody who can keep up with her. And so I was a little bit dubious about that. But by her sophomore year and my junior year, we were roommates. And over that year and a half or so, Paul kept coming to UC Davis and visiting. And he was at our house pretty much every weekend. And at first, I was kind of annoyed because you know, I noticed that 
a minuscule uh, increase in our pg e bill, but he was always fixing things for us, fixing doors, doing, we rented a whole house, he would do the yard work for us, so it was very enjoyable to have him. He was a, a great character. I remember Stacia found a little kitten on campus near a dumpster, and she brought him all the way home in her backpack on her bicycle. And our lease stipulated that we couldn't have any pets. So eventually our landlord found out about the cat who was named Harold and told us we had to get rid of him. And Stacia's parents were allergic to cats, so they wouldn't have the cat at their home. So Paul asked his parents, Paul's from San Diego, and they said no. And he finally got one of his older sisters to take the cat. So he drove that cat down to San Diego with the understanding when they had a place where they could keep pets, they would take Harold back. And so my respect for Paul deepened, and I started to believe that Paul had the character to match my good friend, Stacia. Well, fast forward to the summer before we graduated, and I rode my bike over to Stacia's house, and I didn't know Paul was there, but he was there visiting. And I was talking to Stacia's parents, and my mom's longtime boyfriend had just recently gotten married. My mom wasn't ready to get married, and so he moved on, he found somebody else, and he got married. And so Stacia's mother, she had this knack for embarrassing people, like, like most parents. And she said to me, while looking at Paul, that's just awful when people date long term and the guy doesn't marry the girl. And so we all understood that this was sort of a pointed comment to you, Paul. And Stacia turned red, but Paul just took it with a plum and he kind of laughed. And I thought, okay, that doesn't make him run away from this family. And I only say that because your mom is not here. <laughs> then I think he's a keeper. Well, Stacia and Paul, they graduated, and Paul, you went to law school at University of San Diego, and Stacia, you went to physical therapy school at Long Beach, and Paul's parents had a condo in San Diego, and you guys got to live there for free. And then Stacia, your little sister, Trisha, went to San Diego State, and Paul had such a big heart that Trisha got to move in too, and that was a big cost savings for their family, not having to pay for the dorm or housing all those years, and it was kind of a safe environment for little Trisha. She had her older sister looking after her, and Paul, even before you and Stacia got married, you definitely acted as a, a brother and a family member. Well, when you guys got married, I was in Taiwan, so I didn't get to attend the wedding. But over the years, Harold the cat did move back in with you, and I got Christmas cards and annual invitations to your sausage fest party in October. Sometimes I could go, sometimes I couldn't. And then, I remember, oh, maybe 10 years ago, I got an email eulogy about Harold the cat's passing. And you guys love that cat so much, and I just, thought that it was amazing coming from a point where you didn't have your life in a state to be able to have your own pet to finding a place for that cat and having that cat until he passed away in an old age and loving him so much. And in the meantime, every year I got the Christmas card, I always wondered, you know, were you guys going to have kids? And you know, when we got together and talked, you both said, well, there's some illnesses in the family that are genetic and reasons why you couldn't have kids. So five years ago, when you were both 43, I was very surprised to get a birth announcement in the mail that you had a daughter, baby Katie. And I think that's amazing after 20 years of marriage to have a baby at 43. And I know, see the way you guys raise Harold, I know you guys are wonderful parents. Congratulations on that. And looking at all that you've accomplished over this, the years, Stacia, you got your PhD in physical therapy. Paul, you built a law practice. 
I know you'll give little Katie just a wonderful life. So thank you again for having us here on the occasion of your 25th anniversary and over time, Paul, I've grown to like and respect you more and more and now I'm finally convinced that you have the medal to go the distance with our cowgirl. Congratulations, guys.